Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Wednesday, September 7th, 2016. Mr. Cook, would you lead us in the Pledge of the Flag? Yes, ma'am. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. So tonight is sort of a special meeting. We have an abbreviated and focused agenda on a few key topics. So first up at 6.30, two items related to the November 16th, 2016 special town meeting. First, a fiscal, fiscal <coughs> overview. Second, uh, review potential warrant articles. Then at 7.15, we go over selectmen, uh, selectmen's representative to the personnel board. So we're going to um, change that appointment. And then 7.20, Littleton Commerce Sewer common sewer strategic plan proposed action plan update <clears throat> all right so to start um, at the beginning with the special town meeting so again two two items um, within that category first is let's get a lay of the land so it's a fiscal overview I think Bonnie will take us through that you know what's our situation what do we have to use what are our options and some recommendations so let's start there um, basically, for the fiscal 2017 um, spending plan, when we left the May annual town meeting, uh, we were in balance with a small surplus of uh, approximately $4,400, um, and it, you know the budget supported all the reserve requirements and everything that is defined in our financial policies. Um, since then, we've received finalized state aid figures um, and updated projections, um, so we have some small changes um, within the scope of a you know a $40 million spending plan, there's small changes, but um, they can be significant. So within the final state aid figures we received, um, we now stand in balance with an adjusted surplus of about $105,000, which is a $101,000 increase um, over the, the May projections. Of this increase, $52,000 approximately is directly attributed to um, increases in net school state aid, so Chapter 70, um, Choice In, Choice Out, Tartar, those types of um, accounts. And the remaining um, 49000 in is non-school revenue, um, such as general municipal aid and um, room tax. Uh, so this is sustainable revenue. So this funding could be appropriated within the special town meeting um, article for budget adjustments if the board desired to do so. Um, so that's the recurring revenue part. There's also one-time available funding for fiscal 2017 as a direct result of the fact that we had a lot less snow last year than we did the year before. Um, we did not have any surplus um, snow and ice money last year. We have approximately 440,000 available this year. Um, that doesn't mean that we didn't tap into the deficit that we budgeted. We typically, um, annually, we budget for 200,000 by appropriation and 450 in our deficit reserve. So 650,000 in total snow and ice funds. We did tap into the deficit by about $50,000, but we did receive a, free, a FEMA reimbursement for about $40,000. Um, so we really only utilized 10,000 10, of that deficit reserve. Um, so that $440,000 under the policies can be utilized for one-time expenditures if the board desired to do so. You could augment reserves, you could do additional capital, um, whatever you, you desire to do so. Um, it can't be used in the operating budget because it's not sustainable. We don't know what snow and ice is going to be next year. I could use it all again. Let's um, hope there's a surplus next I, year, too. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Last year was unusual, um, but it is available for you this year. Um, we do know that there are some um, capital items. I know you're going to review the warrant um, that are, are, are being requested. Uh, I believe that there are more requests than we have available with the 440. Um, I did, as part of my normal financial review, um, asked the Board of Assessors to review their um, overlay accounts to see if there's any surplus that could also be declared. Unfortunately, they don't meet until next week, so that I don't have that update here. Uh, but there is a, a chance that there could be some other amount available um, by next week. Um, they meet on Friday morning, so I will update the Board when they review their accounts. Um, and I think that's it for that. So as far as fiscal year 17 going, just two months into it, projection-wise, we're looking good. Yeah, uh, we're on target. Um, any issues with schools? Have you heard anything from schools? No, I, I haven't heard. No, they just started. Yeah, they, they really are. They're kind of busy right now yeah. <laughs> with the yeah. first week back. 
but they probably know what their opening sped population is, right? Do, is there anything there that we need to know about? I have not heard any any updates as of yet, um, so we can ask them. Yeah, choice numbers. Yeah. Right, right. So sped and choice is what I'm hearing, right? Yeah. About the um, community preservation piece. Oh, sure. Um, I know that there are some discussions about land acquisition articles um, for the fall town meeting, and some of them might qualify for CPC funding depending on what the purpose they're being acquired is for. Um, so, what I did, not really knowing a whole lot of the, the details on it, I presented you with the open space and the undesignated um, balances as of now. So, with the appropriations that we made in May um, out of CPC, the open space ending balance um, for this year is, or unappropriated balance, is 466,660. And the undesignated um, balance is 611,898. But of that, um, 200,000 is reserved for active recreation. So really, there's 411 available for other purposes. Um, so I know that uh, there were a couple of different land acquisitions. One was the um, Boxborough Road land from the MBTA for 205000 and the other was the Williams property um, at an estimated million one seventy. And if it was um, the desire to acquire both, my recommendation was that we pay directly cash for the, the two hundred and five out of CPC funds, and then we borrow, um, we do a combination of short-term borrowing and some cash withdrawal for the Williams property. Um, if, we, if we took out, uh, let's see, where is it, here we go. If we took out 260,000 from the open space bucket and 210,000 from undesignated for the Williams parcel, um, then we could borrow 700,000 short term and pay that off over three to five years. Mm -hmm. So we could save the bond issuing costs um, and it wouldn't tap out the CPC fund. Um, you still have directly. a balance, still have a balance in there. Yeah. And, um, and the, the other piece of that is that <clears throat> we've applied for a land grant for $400,000 for the Joyce Williams property so that if we got that grant then we could reduce the what we could reduce the borrowing. Right. 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 And so, I also didn't factor in here any contributions into the fund that are being considered for the fall town meeting mm -hmm. because we don't know what, what yeah. town meeting will do. But that would obviously so increase the balance. Madam Chair, if I may. So I know the uh, application deadline was set for the end of June, was it? It was uh, uh, July uh, 13th and okay. we did submit the application. The application was made um, <coughs> contingent on um, a town successful funding. Vote. Yeah, and, and in fact, the, the 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 form of a town meeting article that, that we drafted and that included in that application was a condi was conditional on mm -hmm. uh, being awarded the grant. So if we're not, so if we don't get the grant. So the way it's going to work, November sixteenth at town meeting, mm -hmm. we'll take a, a vote authorizing. <coughs> acquisition of the property assuming we get the grant on the condition that we get the grant within a couple of weeks maybe by uh, December they would be making grant awards we'll know if we got it or not if we didn't get it if we didn't get the grant then um, we would go back to a future town Plan meeting. A. Yeah. but we were told that the grant application would be more competitive if we didn't appropriate all the money up front because then we yep. don't need it. Right. So we so we put in a conditional grant. Okay. And and um, have we let our legislators know that yes. the grant went in? Yep. Okay. Yep. And I let them know today about the complete streets grant for four hundred thousand that we just submitted. So. I don't see Jim here. He's usually here, uh, if I may, Madam Chair. Yes, um, you know, just to, to, to the, the complete street to tap into that. Uh, with the construction going on on uh, Great Road uh, 2A uh, from Westford to uh, 495 planned construction, mm. I'd like to see if we can either one of us along with Jim Clyde can sit down with Mass Dot, set a meeting so that we can A, go over our com mm -hmm. sure. complete streets program and let's review that project um, with Mass Dot so we can get those sidewalks redone, get the granite that's already existing 
they are redone. Um, those sidewalks are in tough shape. And uh, take a look at the, the common area as a whole, maybe. Uh, helping out, um, I know at one time, uh, working with um, John, Mr. Borowski on the, um, the Veterans Memorial down there, get the cuts in the um, common area for wheelchairs for the Veterans Memorial mm -hmm. and uh, fixing those si uh, those pathways. Kind of see if we can negotiate or get yeah. that involved in this and, project. And, and we'd have some other opportunity. There was a lot of um, good information that the uh, East Street prioritization plan came up with about all, all the areas in town, including, including the state highway. Sure. The state roads, we weren't going to be limited to, you know, not going to look at Littleton Common or other areas. That's one. The other thing is that there's this master plan, um, uh, Charette, uh, that's now re rescheduled for September 30 and October 1st, focusing on Littleton Common. So maybe there can be some other ideas that the community comes up with. But before they start going out to bid, before they start getting their document together, uh, yeah. let's see if we can sit down with Mass Dot. So, um, and if did they, say, did they say when the um, I don't the remember. Time? Jim has some dates and has okay. the information on it. Um, we may be a little late yeah. to the game, yeah. but if we leverage our award for the complete streets program that we uh, received and mm -hmm. the recognition the state has given the town uh, for our, our program, I think uh, we should be able to leverage something out of them. Very good. And if no, no other member would, I'll be more than happy to get involved. With Anybody else wants to? I'm just checking our champion assignments and seeing if it fell where that might fall. But I don't think there's anything really on no, there. No, there isn't. Yeah, it's more state road. You yeah, know. exactly. It's, yeah, yeah, the road road improvements all as well. So. Right. By all means. Like yep. <laughs> Great. More to do. <laughs> exactly. Good idea. <laughs> That but at least, good. look, look at, we, we got to leverage something out of this. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? Yep. You did a great job on the air. It dovetails really well into the whole complete street. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. May I, may I ask? Of course. Yeah, it's, it's just one other question for Bonnie. Um, based on what you said about the, 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 the shifting of funds for the two parcels of property, uh, short term, short term debt um, sustainable in the CPC. Services. Okay, um, that's. You I thought you said that. that but. Debt service payment of one hundred and fifty-seven thousand yep. this year. That actually goes away next year. Okay. This is the last year for the Church Meadow parcel. Perfect. So we did it the same manner. Perfect. Thank you. Can I? Uh, just going backward, uh, Bonnie, to the first page. Um, to be clear on the the um, additional funds available for capital reserves, if I'm reading that correctly, almost the entirety of what we had available is the snow and ice. Is that right? It is the entirety. Yes. Of okay. Entirety. So, yeah. is is that unusual? Because usually, don't we have other items too that? No, it's it's. Snow and ice is the primary source of funding for okay. the fall yeah, town Two meeting. years ago, it was two hundred thousand, maybe that were right. available. And that's usually the only... Well, a couple of years ago in the fall, we were dealing with a couple million dollars available from a variety of sources, right? I mean, we, we spent around that, didn't we, at the uh, fall town meeting? Well, any, in excess of this, anyway. That we spent it, but I don't yeah, know. yeah. Uh, I don't think it was new. Yeah, okay. I, but it just struck me that if it weren't for the snow and ice, we wouldn't have anything, right? right. So we Right, yeah. right. Right. Snow and ice under the policy is defined as being available for one-time purposes. I understand that part. I just I, my memory was that there was usually a few sources of, of our uh, what we used to call free cash, and uh, and this seems to be the only one now. Yeah, I mean, maybe we just knuckle things down well, enough. Two to years ago, we we were uh, well. We two years ago at uh, November town meeting, we put money into we began putting capital uh, stabilization. Money into the, yeah, and, and also to the um, CPC, the, CPC uh, the blended CPC. Right. Fund. So there was uh, $200,000, I think, that we, but we took it from mitigation funds and put it into the CPC. Okay, that's that's one of the variables, mitigation. Those sort of things are one-offs, I understand you could, that. You could but do that. You could do that at this town meeting. Um, you know, we, one of the joint meeting discussions we're looking at for Monday night is, hmm would include the Community Preservation Committee, um, especially because there's so much spending that's proposed right. from CPC 
eligible projects, you know, you know, million dollars and more than a million dollars for land acquisitions. If you wanted to reduce your borrowing, you could put, you know, either now or at the at the Springtown meeting, you could put um, more money into the uh, the blended CPA fund. Yeah. Uh, with the idea that you would take it out yeah. later. I, I, I get it on the appropriating end of it. It's just more on the, the sources of the revenue. I, I probably should clarify maybe <coughs> going forward that this is the general fund, the sources of revenue from the general fund for either recurring expenses or one-time expenses. Yeah. And snow and ice is the primary one from the general fund. We can always appropriate from the reserves you know the well, we've just had a pre it seems we've had a pretty good run of having you know a number in this neighborhood or you know uh, half this like 200 to 400 available every fall it seems yeah, uh, last year we didn't have any from snow and ice so the but we had we but we had it from other sources that's what i'm saying right it was the uh, yeah. it was the, the the 40b development right wasn't it right. the the mitigation from that I think uh, we actually i think we actually waited until the, until the spring time you didn't put all that in so. Well, my only concern is that if, you know, say we had a normal snow year this year, we, we, we shouldn't get in the habit of counting on any of this. No. no. <laughs> right, right. Let's hope for it. It's always nice to have it right. because no, we know I, we had a nice winter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those are good indications. Yeah. It's no nice snow, to be talking about, about, yeah. to talk about things that you want to plow. Yeah. The positive measure, because I think I sent something to you a week or so ago on the vac vacation a local newspaper from a local yeah. town north of Lowell headline running $24 million deficit. So we're doing quite well, thank you. <laughs> In comparison to, I don't know how many overrides they had or what happened. Right. Well, we're getting conflicting uh, prognoses on the, on the winter. The squirrels in my backyard have skinny tails, but the pine trees have heavy pine cones, so I don't know which you know, myth you go with. Uh, <laughs> Oh, did, did all see a <laughs> <laughs> you know better than I. Uh, I'll be quiet for a while. Okay. <laughs> That's a good point. It's, it's an unreliable source of funds. It can be anything at any time. Skinny tail? <laughs> that means okay, heavy 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 vehicles. Vehicles. Oh, heavy iron. Right. Bonnie had jumped over need to make the note of that. spending plan. If there's any all highlights all. Yeah. you wanted yeah. to do on that one. The one in the middle. Sorry, I jumped right over it. I'll, I'll, I'll I just did a, a recap of the... The budget okay. um, as it's appropriated. I mean, this is this is a very familiar list for me. Yeah. It's just kind of helpful if you ever wanted to see the additions that we did into the budget. Do you want me to walk through them? I tend to agree. I don't know if there's any questions from the board or anything you want to discuss for now, or any other questions on any other items. So if I if I can kind and of recap, it's important since the main reason for tonight's meeting was to take a first run through the articles that. You wanted you to be familiar funny. with how much money we had right, to spend. Right. Sure. Exactly. Sure. So, so a rundown operating budget surplus of 105,000 or 106. Capital fund surplus of 440,000. 440, CP funds active recreation 200,000. CP funds open space 466 or is 466 the total and 200 of that is active recreation. Sorry. No. 466 is 466. available in open space. 611 in open space. And then of the undesignated, <coughs> 611 is there, but only 411 is uh, unencumbered. Okay, 411, got it. Okay. okay, guys, any other questions on how we're doing? Where we're at? <coughs> right. Okay, so that takes us to 1B, which, like Keith said, purposes, let's run through. These articles is the first time we kind of been able to talk about them as a board. We had some ideas on, you know, are there any that could wait? Um, some have open questions, so let's just go through and see where we're at with each and have a discussion. So, so we just run through those. Uh, article one is the standard one we put in front page bills. If we have any, I don't know that we have any yet. I have one. One? Yeah, okay. wrestling with right now. <laughs> um, we might pass the hat and bring it for a nine tenths vote. Uh, the uh, personnel board uh, has re is reminding us that the um, state minimum wage moves to uh, $11 per hour as of January 
first, and so what we need to do is to make some minor adjustments to our classification and compensation plan so that any number that's lower than 11 becomes 11. And um, so we need to do that with an article to amend the plan. That one's straightforward, right? That's Yeah, and we'll be doing it uh, a year from now. Is, is there a way to do that, kind of empower the personnel board to be able to do that, to follow whatever the mass general law, whatever the, the, um, the minimum wage law dictates? Well, we, we could certainly avoid having to bring it to a fall town meeting if we had, if we had a, at the annual town meeting, we added a section that includes making the, the adjustment in, on January 1st, because I think the is minimum wage going up. Are we topping off at 11? Is that it? I haven't okay. reached it yet, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but no, you can only amend the uh, the plan by a vote of town meeting. Okay. So. Good question. On that first article, sorry to go backwards, but we can't vote to put that in until we know if we have bills, because if there are no bills, then do you put it in? No, you, you can put it usually in. insert it. Yeah, yeah we insert the action. article, okay. and then if there's no bill to pay, then, Take then it off. the board would True. draw the article Very good. when we get to town meeting. Oh, you do. On um, article, so article three is the budget uh, amendments authorization, and typically what you do is you insert the, the article in this form, and then between now and town meeting, or between now and the time that we put the booklet out, you would uh, finalize what what amounts. And sometimes the money needs to get moved between accounts mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason. So you know, we do that in the annual too. So we do yes, that, right? yep. Um, article four is uh, I have to say at this point a partial list of supplemental capital uh, requests because I keep getting additional ones. Uh, the fire, I will say the, the fire chief was among the first who was there. He reminded us that his $300,000 uh, capital project for uh, self-contained breathing apparatus, he sub in his plan, and in, in what he submitted, it was for 300000 But we're also submitting, planning to submit a, a, a grant application uh, for which we needed a local match, so we only appropriated 15. Again, on the idea, you don't if you appropriate all of it, and the funding agency the finds out, then they'll say, well, you don't need it. Right. So we only appropriated 15. We did not get the grant, and so now the chief is coming back for um, the rest of the total project cost. I would I would say. Um, and, and we knew that was the deal a year yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, we knew. Yeah. So, so, so that's that's there. Uh, I just have one question on that, if I may, Madam Chief. Uh, when you when you when you when you do a project like this, and I know these uh, the apparatus expires, do you stagger it, or is it all one purchase? Uh, so, in ten years, when this stuff um, uh, expires, you got to get another full three hundred thousand. So, for for this um, particular item, it makes the most sense to do it all at once. So that, I mean, call members come in at various points. Um, if everybody can be familiar with the same piece of apparatus, that makes the most sense. Um, you know, very often they have to deal with the stuff in darkness and smoke, stuff like that. So if they think, think they have one uh, piece of equipment and it's actually the other one, it, it, there could be issues. So um, our preference would be to do it all as, all as once for safety reasons. What's your life expectancy on this equipment? Uh, 10, to, 10 to 14 years. Okay. And maybe for those that are either just kind of catching on or, or whatnot, could you just give a quick um, summary of what the apparatus does? Uh, so these are self-contained breathing apparatus. This is what the uh, firefighter wear, uh, wear on their backs when they go into uh, a building that's on fire. Um, it's basically just compressed air so that we can breathe and work in that environment to uh, work on extinguishing a fire or a, a hazardous materials uh, type of a situation. Um, so uh, it, it's basically a, a pack that goes over your shoulders on the outside of your gear that has the bottle on, on the back side with uh, a regulator that clips into your mask and face piece so that you can uh, safely you know, breathe in a, a 
difficult environment. Thank you. Like when your house has carbon monoxide in it and you guys come and rescue me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Hypothetically. Hypothetically speaking. The next two projects <laughs> listed here are ones that came out of the discussion, the last discussion we had <coughs> with the board that, uh, on um, August 22nd. And um, we're in the process of getting cost estimates. I've talked, I know Ivan has been in touch with uh, Gail. Uh, associates about the athletic field one. I also I talked with to um, Joe Calentro uh, earlier today and just confirmed that those discussions are going on. Actually, PNBC is meeting with Gail um, right, now. right now, and so I gave Joe a list. I said, well, while you're at it, why don't you either you know can the PNBC also give us uh, some uh, a cost estimate or some leads on the other. Um, uh, planning uh, thing we wanted to do, which is a town government building space needs assessment. So we would hope to have some proposed scopes and cost estimates soon. Um, and, and do we think Gail does both of those? Uh, I know that Gail, does, Gail certainly does the recreation yeah. fields. Uh, I asked yeah. Joe if he could use the collective wisdom of PNBC for ideas. We had worked through them on the last one where we had where we'd hired an architectural. Right firm, uh, Brent Mogel's uh, firm, right. um, back in 2006, and um, so I'd like to get some get some help from PNBC on this one. So, so Keith, if yeah. I could. Oh, yeah, please, no, no go ahead. Um, <coughs> Gail recently did uh, a similar study for Stowe, and I think uh, Alicia could probably talk to that a little bit, but um, the fact that they went to bat for us with the, the with the track, there was mm -hmm. some problems with the, the warranty issues with the track, and, and Gail went to bat for us. Now, they, they've been out of that picture for a couple of years now, and they, they went back with us and fought for a brand new track. Yeah, so we're it's getting the track reconstructed. Correct. As of tomorrow. Right. Really? Yeah. So um, that, they are, um, we're in negotiations with Gail as, as the designer for right. the alumni renovation. Um, so they're kind of on site. Yep. They've already done some of this yeah. work when they did the, the feasibility for the track as well as alumni. Yeah. So um, I did a Google search for athletic field things and Gail kept all over showing up, yeah. Stowe, and you know several other towns. Right. So they've done a lot of this. Um, it's it's <coughs> they're they're, they're Look, big, I mean, guys, big guys in the industry. I know that we've had a good experience with them. I just didn't know whether they uh, they were broad to cover both of these types of studies. I don't know, don't know but they're going to get asked. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two minutes. So. Anything you want to add, Alicia? I don't think that I can speak to it on the other side of it because I know it's mostly been for recreation and field facilities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if that's the, the whole report for Stowe, they, you know, covered those pieces. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alicia. Well, in, the, in this item and the next one actually goes back to the conversations we've been having about mm -hmm. looking at holistic, comprehensive yeah. solutions to our problems. So this is one of the first steps on the the field it's just that, and for you know for planning purposes I, I don't know you plug do you plug in 30 on one and 50 on the other uh, you're getting if so you're at 365 before you get to anything else and um, you we've got the uh, I know what we'll have a further discussion about the little in common sewer strategic plan you're going to need some money to do something to, mm -hmm. to, to move it to move it forward um, the other uh, let's see the other, uh, I got an email <clears throat> from uh, the chief of police who's on vacation this week, but he just wanted to put in a reminder that the, for that uh, public safety communication um, appropriation for this, that the state made, the request was for 100000 the funding was for 50000 and the chief wanted to <clears throat> put in uh, request for 50, which he will give us when he gets back. He'll put that in writing so you can consider it. But you know, you're, you're if you do everything that's being asked, you run out of you run out of it's no money. money that we have. It's no it's money. money. <laughs> unless yes, no money. Unless we're transferring or proposing to transfer some of some of our accounts that we have too, <clears throat> which some of these things would be eligible for, I would think. What was that, Paul? I didn't get Unless we, tra capital. we fund through transfers from some well, of the accounts we've been building, you know, right. capital Well, state. for example, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, the, the fire, uh, the, the uh, self-contained breathing apparatus, I would think would be eligible if you want. We've never transferred money out of the of the capital stabilization. But plan. that's the whole point. But you could. Yeah. Right. Sure. Sure. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Good point, Paul. 
Okay, town government building space. And did we have other requests on uh, funding? Requests? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we did receive an email today with a, the form for um, cable. LCTV is looking to purchase some equipment. I can't remember the amount off the top of my head. Um, but it, the funding will come directly from the PEG access funds, so there'll be no impact to the operating budget. Um, so we'll include that. It was it was for get ready for it was for for high definition cameras for this room. And for this came, room. So. Not the portable wait, ones. Wait, what? But they're going to have a makeup. Wait, wait, wait. They said they have someone with makeup ready. Oh, in there. Hold on. I need a lot of makeup for this Whoa, place. Oh, doggy. Oh, doggy. So we'll see, but we'll see about that. Wow. Maybe that can wait till the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. Like just wait. Just wait. Yeah. When, when were we thinking to close the warrant? Have we talked about that? Yet? Yes, yeah. it closes 45 days prior to town meeting, so yeah. it's uh, Friday, mm -hmm. September 30th noon. Okay. So you're you've got two more re regular meetings right. to to discuss and insert articles of the 12th and the 26th. Yeah, I want to close it sooner rather than later before people start thinking of uh, <laughs> ways to spend money. Right. Great. Just saying. Okay, so just to close up. That's why we only have, we limit the number of town meetings. That's true. Mm -hmm. So close off on that one. That's a comprehensive needs assessment for rough ranch, uh, recreation fields and town government building space needs assessment. We're working to get those dollars, what those might cost. Littleton Common Sewer Strategic Plan and what the cost of that might be. Should we talk about that during the common update? Or I guess we need kind of an action plan to figure out how we get a cost estimate on that one. I think we've got the agenda. Agenda, okay. yeah. All right, got it. All right. Any other comments, questions on Article 4? Good. All right. Next, art Article 5 is uh, it's twofold. It's the fire station project, but we've added language to authorize the uh, lease of a temporary uh, fire department facility. As, as the chief was exploring where the where the department would go, and had a lead on a particular the ability to to rent a particular location at a pretty affordable cost. In fact, we need town meeting authorization. It's a procurement for for an interest in real property. It's greater than the threshold amount of thirty five thousand dollars because it would so so we need to have a town meeting vote authorizing it. They've gotten right on it. I think you've already got the RFP, the uh, the, the bid spec out, um, so that by the time, so that we'll have uh, in time for town meeting, not only the construction bids in hand, but also the the uh, the results of the lease, uh, the, the bid for a lease for the temporary headquarters location. Anything to add, Chief? Um, just to briefly expand on it a little bit, um, we did find a location that um, potentially could save us a significant amount of money compared to going to the temporary uh, quarters at the police station. So, um, Ad adequate facilities, adequate facilities, uh, apparatus, living space, office space. Uh, you know, we'll make it work we'll make it work for the year. It's going to, I mean, you know, no matter where we go, it's go there's going to be a little uncomfortableness for the year, but it, it, this accommodates us very well. It, it's all uh, very close to each other. So, um, you know, we, we've gone through the process. It's uh, gone to the paper uh, and the, as well as the RFP to the central register. So, um, let's see if anything else comes back and... Uh, Who knows, maybe there's more than one location that meets all the criteria but we're allowed to specify what we need in the bid document which is what what's been done there you go. thank you any questions on that one okay. you, you're still in line to have the bid documents in the number for the fire station for the 30th and uh, the documents beyond. will be done by the timeline that we uh, okay we've previously discussed uh, we've been meeting with the architect weekly fine-tuning everything and uh, they're st they're working on finishing up the, the uh, I would say that the plans are probably 75 to 80 percent done so they're they're literally changing day by day and so the date uh, October 25th is the deadline is the uh, proposed opening for the general uh, contractor bid and the, and two days later is our publication deadline for getting the, the voter information document out so we would have that information in hand then. 
Good. Unless it snows on the 25th, you know, you can't <coughs> close town hall. So. Just so you know. <laughs> no. No, most not. No. Yeah. No, most not. We only got more than 40 grand. All right, Article 5, uh, 6. So Article 6 is a, is a proposed uh, article for the old night field uh, renovation. See the word renovation. It's an ally. Uh, construction project. And um, where um, the, the, the status of the, you can, I talked to Joe Calentra about what the status is. Well, you got we got our guy here. We, so um, Gail Associates is the, the designer that um, we're, we're contracting with um, to put together the plans for us. And um, it's going to be, if, if we are to make it to the November 16th town meeting, it's, it's, it's pretty aggressive. Um, so it's, it's basically upon us. If we're able to answer questions quickly and, and be real responsive to Gail as they're moving forward to get to an 80% or a 90% plan, um, I would anticipate that we would likely go to town meeting with um, more of an estimate. It wouldn't be open bids, but um, it's, it's a pretty aggressive plan for us to be able to um, go to town meeting with everything neatly tied up in a bow. So we're, um, we're still charging forward and that is our, our goal and our objective date. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow night right here at 7.30 and um, we'll get an update from PNBC who's meeting right now on this very matter. So I, aside from that, as they know what our scope is. They're, they're tightening up and defining our scope upstairs right now. So we shall see. So we can check in at our next yeah. meeting. And Absolutely. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll certainly know more, even you know, if not, if not by the 12th, by the 26th, you'll be you'll be able to make a very informed decision. Certainly by the 26th about whether this project's ready to go. I mean, the danger would be that if you if you uh, if, because we, if if there are not bids in hand, if town meeting appropriates a number, and then the bid comes in at a higher number then notwithstanding the fact that you voted for it, you can't start the project. So right. it's, which is why, frankly, we pre-bid the big ones so we so that we don't Get have to come back twice, which is, but, you know, there's a, is there a cost estimator, too, I think, yes. involved in that project? Sorry, yes, there is. Which, um, also recommending that the library hey, follow yeah, so Pursued. The fact that Gail has done so many of these, and if you've Googled them, you've seen how many projects they've done, it's it's literally, we could sit here right now with one of them in front of their computer doing the cost estimation, and they've got a cost estimator in-house, and, and they, they can say, okay, you don't want the aluminum fencing, you want chain link, vinyl chain link fencing. They, they have all these numbers, you know, down to the foot. So they could they can very quickly, they're, they're confident that they can make this happen as long as we don't restrict them. So... Um, that was, and because they just got engaged, there's no number. That, I mean, Correct. we still, you know, we're carrying a 2.35 million as a as a as an estimate, mm -hmm. but not until you know until Gail actually gets into it, designs something, and then applies its cost es estimator to it. Then then we'll know what it is, and as I say, we'll certainly know more in time for the Correct. meeting on the 26th. I think so. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Theoretically, a fluff and utter, Article 7. 7 is uh, to um, take off the books uh, borrowing authorization that we no longer need. Actually, on this one, I was looking back, um, we, we certainly acquired Church Meadow. It's not that we didn't spend two hundred seventy thousand dollars. We did, but we did. I think we did short-term right. state house notes or something. Short-term borrowing right. on, on this. So, we, so we didn't go out to to uh, to uh, uh, you know a bond issue with it. So we can take it off the books now. The next article, if you if you 
wanted to go forward now. You can certainly go forward in the spring as well, but, but, but you have the opportunity, again, to add local funds into the, the blended community preservation fund May to increase back to the base. Se uh, seven again. Seven so, so when we take this, this, this uh, borrowing authorization off the books, you let our bond folks know? Yes. We update okay. our outstanding um, and un unissued. It's called okay. outstanding and unissued. So it cleans it up. It reduces that liability. Very good. Thank you. Sorry. And so on the uh, potential funding sources for the blended CPA fund, there's the 300000 that we received from Pope Regroup, which is undesignated for that purpose. Uh, there's... Uh, we will again have... Um, I'd like to revisit that because I thought there was some talk about recreation fields no well not in our in our agreement with potpourri we took out any language because we viewed it as our business not theirs okay what the money would be used for so it's, si it's silent on what it okay. can be used for. all right um the um let's see what else uh, cell tower funds for open space acquisition we typically move whatever that balance is into the into the open space CPA fund we can I think we can do that and we should do that in the spring because the there will be more funds accumulated by then and mm -hmm. we we have some funds that have come in from 15 great road mitigation fund sales of some of the qualifying properties if I may again yeah, on the on the cell phone tower uh, funds uh, is that incorporated in your calculations when we talk about the the, the acquisition of the two properties um, what we appropriated into it from last year is included. Okay. Anything prospectively going forward is not. Is so not. nothing that So, so that here. part of um, the recurring revenue to the CPC, a CPA fund. Uh, it's included for last year, what we did last May. Yep, yeah. Through, not through June 30th. June 30th. Uh, this year. Okay. Just talking, you know, so uh, for debt services, that's all, you know. Right. Annually we dump in. Right. Six, like seven grand, thousand, seventy yeah. thousand, whatever. So it is. this is conservative, very conservative, because okay. we know we're going to add more. That's, and that's uh, what the I state to match hear. is also not factored right. into it because the state doesn't tell us. That's a good point right. because if we do incur, yeah. say, a hundred thousand a year in debt service, well, for an open space, well, we've got at least seventy. Exactly. That we that, can, that's my point. We can't count it, but we can count on it. So. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, um, Mill Pond restoration. Um, feasibility study we needed uh, we were told by the Army Corps that their projected costs went up uh, so the, our share the what comes to us goes up by 19,500 mm. we you voted in in July to your intent to insert this article for the supplemental funds and authorize the signing of the agreement with the feds so that they can start the feasibility study project and I just got those Agreements finally in the mail today, so uh, we're springtime when they start. Will they, do they have a kickoff? No, date? they still have. You know, they still have to do the uh, the feasibility study work has to be done, uh, and following that, then they'll come back to us and say either a go or no go. Gotcha. That the feasibility may prove that they that they don't Can't proceed help. with the project, yep. but if they do, then you'd be interested in Article Ten. Which, uh, which, if we can, we just have to have town council uh, close the loop with the with the property owner or the donor. But we had been approached about uh, about uh, uh, property on it's actually submerged property at, on Harwood Ave that that would be great to include in the scope of this uh, Mill Pond restoration project. What's ever in the scope of the project has to be owned by the town. So the fact that this was that they were proposing to donate it is very very helpful and timely. So we're going to try to pursue that in time for the town meeting. Whether or not, then whether or not we proceed, we you know not, be, there's no be downside done. to acquiring that right. property, gotcha. even if we don't get to the the project. So that whole portion of the pond, that yeah, whole is it like like ten acres is on. It's under, underwater. Yeah, it's underwater and it's owned by somebody. This is Tenstrom. I know there used to be parts property. of it that went out, but yeah. not. Not the entire thing. Although it was a field once too. So. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So next is uh, the next uh, is the surplus mass dot land on Boxborough <coughs> Road. Uh, the 
uh, it's being offered to us for the for the appraised value of two hundred five thousand dollars, and the state will we, they were planning to auction it and make it available, but they're letting us buy it if we buy it at this town meeting. And it's right across the street from the property at 31 Boxborough Road, which was the subject of our land grant application. We still have not consummated a, a uh, purchase and sales agreement. Town Council has been in contact. We've had lots of discussions with the seller's attorney, Ray Lyons, and um, we're with vacations and all during the month of August. We didn't make much progress, but we're at this point we're scheduled to come to the board for an update at your meeting on the twenty sec on the twenty sixth of September to come and talk about um, land negotiations for this property. <clears throat> but we can put an article in and then we can specify uh, what the uh, you know if the you know, if worst case happens if we don't reach a deal then there's no article but it's, assuming that we do then you'll, you'll be able to take a motion under it. Uh, Article 13 uh, has to do with the um, the property on which we sit, which in, according to the assessors, that map, that parcel number uh, includes not only the town offices, but also the middle school and the Russell Street School. Town Council had diagnosed that the school committee is in, has care, custody, and control of everything except one of the athletic fields. So uh, that we might want to do some cleanup by having the um, the school committee uh, have the selectmen declare a surplus the property the school committee is using and have the school committee declare this property a surplus. There, it's been that way since you know the 1920s, I think. Uh, so we we don't need to. 1924. We don't need to uh, bring it to this uh, fall town meeting, but we certainly can. We have, you know, we're, we're, well, while it's on our minds. Uh, but if you were looking for articles to wait for for um, for the spring, this 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 might be one of them. <clears throat> I should uh, I should also mention in, in terms of in terms of spring, other things that might happen at the spring having to do with this property. That if the that the um, the library trustees are scheduled to take a vote tomorrow night at their meeting to choose which location they want to pursue for a funding grant, the two finalists are either uh, uh, re uh, reconstructing their existing library or the slope site. In either case, the school committee has care, custody, and control according to these ancient uh, votes of town meeting. And that uh, the, the uh, Mass Board of Library Commissioners has clarified with Town Council in the last week that by June of 2017, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners would require that town meeting take a vote on regarding the site of the proposed library project. We've talked about that as an interim measure for the January uh, grant application that the that, uh, that uh, a, a vote of the school committee declaring it a surplus would be would be sufficient to the state agency. That will get you through past January. Does not require a town meeting vote this fall. It would let the trustees submit a grant application in January. However, by next June, which for us means May, the annual town meeting, town meeting would need to vote on a town council is mapping this out for us and we'll have it in your packet for Monday night. Mm -hmm. We need to take votes that would authorize the trustees to apply for and accept grants to um, it, to uh, and to transfer the site to the trustees and it can't but that can be contingent upon award of the grant and upon a subsequent vote of town meeting to appropriate the local funds. And then it's so there will there will be a vote. There would need to be a vote if the library proceeds with its grant application in January. There would need to be a vote in May regarding that that satisfies what the Mass Board of Library Commissioners is asking for. The final vote, if if the if that grant were funded, <coughs> the final vote would would be um, within six months of being notified of a grant award that the town would have to appropriate the local match. Um, 
Sam Alvarez was telling us that those awards would be made on a, on a rolling basis. There will be some awards made next summer for which if it, if, if it were, if Littleton were one of the awards next summer, then it would be the November of 2017 town meeting that would be needed for the local match in order to accept the grant. Um, so, and if it's later, then it would be later. So we'll have those things spelled out. So good, good news is it's not as imperative for the January action as we <coughs> feared it might be uh, having this cleared up. But by the same token, there's no reason we shouldn't do it at this point. There's no, there's no, re on the, on the cleanup of this, I right. mean, there's no, you know, every day that goes by, every day that yeah, goes by right. with us not being in charge of our own building, you know, so even mm -hmm. coming up on 100 years, so. Right. Right. And we have them come into our next meeting so we can yes. talk about. And, and the school committee has, has been um, quite uh, supportive of, in fact, they were, you know, in our initial discussions, they said, look, if we need to fix this, Let's fix it. So, <coughs> let's fix it. Right. Seems meaningless now, but I mean, you never know if there were a disaster in this building, and then an insurance agency decided, hey, you don't really even own the land you're on, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's always a good reason to clean up title. Let's, let's not knock on wood. Right. You know what I'm saying? Best to clean it up if we have the opportunity. Right. It's no money. <laughs> Next article, you've uh, you've already voted your intent to insert, and uh, this is too small too. I need to get spell check on this. Um, this is uh, the port uh, adjacent tax title parcels on uh, Narcissus Road, where you wanted to uh, restrict the development. And town council said you can only do that by getting a vote of town meeting. So that's what this is. Uh, the next article is a proposal. Uh, we haven't uh, finalized the discussion on the finance and administration reorganization plan, uh, but if you were to uh, go forward with uh, that, which calls for, uh, proposes a uh, uh, creation of this, uh, or bifurcating Bonnie's position into two, so there's an assistant town administrator and a director of finance and budget, that Carrying that out would require a town, a, a town bylaw amendment, so that that's um, also here for your consideration as you go through uh, more articles. We'll have some additional information for the agenda on Monday night for further discussion about that. Um, and I also threw in, um, since you voted as a policy, to have um, the executive assistant be appointed by the TA. If you wanted to amend the bylaw to do that, you could do that as well. Article 16 is uh, is to establish an OPEB uh, liability trust fund, which the Treasurer would very much like to do, our bonding agencies would very much like us to do, but we've been unable to do up until now because it's only because of the recent change in the law in the uh, Municipal Modernization Act that actually sets up a specific procedure that satisfies our bond rating agencies for an OPEB trust fund. So we want to accept that statute. So we can put a check mark next to that the next time our bond rating agencies ask us. Uh, the uh, I don't think we're. I, it does not appear we're going to be ready with road acceptances. Though we've been carrying a number, uh, but I talked today with um, with uh, with Jim Clyde and with Mara and Two Hill, and it does not appear as though we will be ready with any road acceptances for uh, distribution center circle. That's a huge road. Yeah, and it needs, yeah. uh, there needs to be... Um, Why would we want to take it? Huh. Mm -hmm. that's a, There's that's work that needs to be done to, to bring it up. There are, there, are, there are legal issues that uh, need to be addressed, so... Help me out with that. Oh, so the spring will be soon enough. Control care and custody. Help me out with that. Where is Chestnut Lane? It's control care and custody. Yeah. Off Harvard Road. Is it? Is that where Ivan lives? No. no that's that's what, uh, oh, Harvard, Harvard, Harvard Road. Road. Right, right before you get to Harvard, the right hand side goes down. And next goes all the way back to the camp the campsite. Really? Uh, road, yeah. It doesn't go that far. Yeah. I pull some off to <laughs> It goes through Joe's yard. Ask, ask, ask Google Maps over there. <laughs> Gandalf. All right. Hey, my area down. And um, and let's see, were there any other time? 
department articles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've, we've been made aware of some uh, voter petitioned articles that are uh, to be circulating. Uh, the number I count now is three. Uh, one is uh, to address posting requirements for regulatory boards. <clears throat> Another is to establish a requirement for ballot questions uh, on capital projects over a million dollars. And the third is for um, for expenditures in excess of a quarter of a million dollars uh, to be subject to uh, the ballot and checklist for town meeting if requested by. So those are three citizen petitions that uh, in, in some cases I've been asked for, for uh, um, if, if to have town council look at them. I've not had town council um, look at them. I did tell each of the petitioners how you begin and end an article to see if the town will vote to insert your language or to take on any other action relative there too. That's what our petition, that's the form of what our, of our, what our town meeting petition says. And um, I'll look for any direction from the board on uh, what you'd like. So just a couple of thoughts from my side. It, it, so we've taken, Keith and I, we've taken a, had a little chat on each one of these and each one while May having seemingly good intentions has some pretty negative consequences if we actually, you know, if they went through as they were written. So what I would not like to happen is for us to just, you know, let this go forward and, and let's have a conversation around them because I think we can actually maybe handle them in a different way or look at it in a different way or approach it in a different way than letting it get to town meeting and, and pass the way it is. So maybe we could talk about each one individually and have a bit of a discussion. Does that sound okay? And the, some of the petitioners are here. Yeah. Or, yeah. or proponents, I should say. Yeah. So let's take them one by one. Um, so the first one, just going in order of what's in our packet, um, is the one about posting requirements. So... In addition to any current posting requirements, all public notices of the meetings of regulatory boards and appointed committees shall be posted online at the town's website and according with the same time frames required for posting physical copies of said notices. Said postings shall include the agenda and links to any and all supporting materials that have been provided to the members of said regulatory boards in preparation for the upcoming meeting and that which might become incorporated in the written record of said meeting. So that's the first one, and that's with Cami, which I, I think that's Cami. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think the spirit of this one is, and I'm interpreting a little bit, but it is, you know, making sure that folks have the information that they would like to and need to um, understand what's going on in the meetings readily uh, available online. So that that makes sense, and I think as in general, we've been talking a lot about, you know, what's our website strategy, what's our, you know, how can we make sure things are posted in a timely way. I think the unintended consequences here are we, we do have, you know, boards that don't have staff and um, maybe there are certain circumstances where we'd wonder if, if we didn't do this, what would be the consequences of not doing this? So it's, it takes personnel, it could have unintended costs and we may not have the capabilities to always do these things. And I, I don't know, Keith, if you want to add to that. Well, I, I, I would want to say it's certainly, it's, it's a goal to get as much information up on the town website Absolutely. as we can. Absolutely. And we have records. And, and it's been a goal to, for the regulatory uh, information, I mean, I, as much as anyone, want to be able to search and get information about what's happening Absolutely. in front of all the regulatory boards. And, but we, we, don't, we don't have a consistent pattern of, of what information is uploaded. I mean, we don't upload our liquor license applications, in part because there's some confidential information there that we would need to redact. First, but we don't, but we don't upload our own liquor license applications that we we consider they're on file in the office. Um, the ZBA uh, files, uh, from 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 my observation, appear to those case files are uploaded. The decisions are uploaded. Uh, many of the larger projects for the planning board are. I don't see anything from conservation commission or board of health. Um, and before establishing a, a requirement that in some cases these separately elected boards uh, comply with you know meet a particular standard for posting information I think it, I think 
it would be well for us to be tasked to develop a, an action plan for how we can do that. It is something we want to do, that we want to have the information available at the website. The concern I'd have, though, is if many, many of these, the regulatory process is all about meeting the, the standards of state law. I mean, if someone is submitting a subdivision ap application to the planning board, there are requirements in the state law as well as our own subdivision regulations and how do you meet that. And if you meet those, but you don't meet this one that we created to upload the file, what does that mean? That the applicant doesn't, that the applicant, that the vote of the planning board is, you know, is, is, is not binding? There's nothing that we can do that can change state law. So if, if, the, if the requirements are met to, for the various regulatory boards, then the applicant gets what, they, what they're entitled to, even if we failed to you know, upload, a, upload a document. I'd be concerned about what the expectation is. It's not, part of, it's not a requirement of the open meeting law. Uh, I think it's within the spirit of what the new um, public records, records law is looking for, law. which is a yep. searchable database yep. of town information, and we should certainly do and we should certainly do that. But I would be concerned about about having it as a requirement before we are capable of fulfilling the, the requirement. So it's, it's, uh, maybe it's more of a timing thing, but I, I think it would in order for us not to have the applicant be put at risk. <clears throat> we, we would need to come up with our own plan for, for doing it, but certainly in the spirit of what we'd like to do. I, I believe one of the goal, goals we adopted is uh, you know, a review of that. I know some of the proposals that I had made uh, were along lines of getting more information up on the, the web and uh, greater transparency, accountability, and uh, real-time data and I, and I know that was adopted by the board as one of the goals and who was it you and I were, were we assigned to that I, I, I know. it's all actually yeah, all implement those. new public yeah. records law and no, well no that's, yeah. that's yeah. not the topic uh, yeah, yeah what's the topic that we had it down as a uh, policy and communication uh, well I don't have it in front of me uh, because I wasn't anticipating this coming I think up that was one that it was the entire board I think you're right. There was a on the bottom of our list. There were like four of them. Yeah, I thought it, it, that's that's irrelevant for the moment. But in any event, we've we've committed to following up on it. So yes. I think that you know, regardless of what petitioners may want to do with an article and where that may go in terms of uh, you know passing mess with the attorney general or whatever, we're already we're already committed to, to doing an expansion of uh, you know of our, our online presence and in, in the public's interactivity with with the town through the internet yeah. so. and and I and I would just I would it would be an unfortunate consequence if the applicant is the one that suffered because of our because of the town's inability to comply with not a statutory requirement or even a regulatory one but a vote of town meeting that had set up yet yet another uh, standard that we couldn't meet. So I, I think what our hope is is to be able to is to work out uh, a plan for. I mean, if this is on the warrant and we're having a discussion at town meeting, then we the information that we would want to share with the voters is well, we're working on it. Here's our here's our action plan for working on it, and but we're not but we're not ready to to uh, um, support or, to support or this particular. Yeah requirement at this time. There may be, you know, but but I think we're all of the same Definitely. goal to get the information up for I mean, we've made the voters. commitment to help Nancy uh, in, in her um, resources. Yeah, so IT we've increased resources. We've increased the resources for uh, we, we, so. we, know, we know there's an issue with the website. We know that people are looking for more information uh, on the town's website. Uh, Resources within. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of the situation. We had one person doing a lot of stuff. So we, we've at least made the right steps to resolve that issue. And as uh, Mr. Glavy pointed out, we have a, a goal. So I think we're moving in the right direction. I agree. Cameron, did that make sense? You want to say anything? Could I, could I Supporting oh, I'm sorry. Materials? I'm so sorry. I know I called you, but name and address. Oh, Cammy being 27 Oak Road. Sometimes Carolyn, that's my name, so I, you'll see it both ways. Um, if we took out, if I took out all supporting materials, is that what's contentious? Nothing's contentious, I don't think. 
Well, okay. the, well, I mean, just the well, point about say, the applicants being, yeah, what you know, the, prop, the most there. problematic part is the, is the requirement of the supporting okay. materials and having that to be a requirement because gotcha. it's, okay. what, if we, what if we fail to do that, the right. applicant submitted it, the applicant complied with the law, right. if we're following the laws for those permits, we are compelled to, to issue them. Right. And even if we've fallen down on, you know, uploading the file, to right. the to town meeting. Right, right. So, uh, and and the other, I would actually I would defer probably to the town to the town clerk. That I mean the time frame for when when we post um, our electronically our, our uh, uh, agendas is you know it's it's usually the same hour or or right. day. Right. But it's not always. I mean, if someone's not in the office on Friday, which happens a lot in my office uh -huh. on, for the last, over the last month, then the electronic part doesn't get posted. But I know for sure that the, that the physical agenda got posted on the bulletin board because the town clerk did that. But where I've been uh, short-staffed for the, the last month, all those electronic ones may not be getting up the same day. But So that's one of those management... Issues. How you know? How do we? I guess a, a question I would have too. Would that mean <clears throat> all the small committees that we might form? Yes. Yeah, he, absolutely. I was thinking back to it, like when we had the crematory committee. Yeah. We, we we had the agenda out ahead of time, but sometimes the people who were out doing research and sending us materials were sending us within a day or so, so the people on the board might get it that day. But. Yeah. Like we don't have any supportive perfect staff. Right. Right. Perfect right. example, example of what we got tonight. Yeah, where it's where it says regulatory boards and appointed committees. Well, yeah. regulatory that I mean that's a we got a lot of appointed committees. We've got dozens of them, and, and of and most of them don't have staff. So they're relying. Ninety percent don't have yeah, staff, right. uh, okay. and and then the other pieces. Committee. I mean, well, you know, we all still the adhere to these rules. Who is she? Sorry. Well, Sorry, you can. put well, you post it, but you but whether what whether the electronic copy gets physically uploaded to the town website is is out of the all our boards control. and committees are in compliance with the open meeting law. So, right. um, as Mr. Bergman said, it's it's a matter of staffing. That's the bottom really, so line. So we're again, I, you know, Keith nailed that we're, we're on the same page with where we want to head on that, but we just got to make sure we have the resources and the processes and the procedures to support it. And if we didn't, what's the consequence if this went into effect? So, so that's the feedback. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my name is James Kennedy, and uh, I'm 50 Gilson Road, Melton, Mass. And uh, my business is web design, so that's what I do. And um, there, most of the cities and towns websites around the state are not accessible to people with disabilities. And every file that you put up there needs to be coded properly in order for people who are, who are blind, who use technology for assistive uh, learning and, and using the website. Um, and I know for a fact that most of the files on the website are not accessible. And I've been to them. It's my business. Um, I just quoted a, a client $10 a file to make the PDF files accessible on their website. So the more files you add that are not accessible, when well, the town comes around to revamp the website, it's going to be a huge project. Um, so I think until that gets resolved, the accessibility and use of the website, that um, you shouldn't try to pump all kinds of information and files on the web. Okay, just take my opinion. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, okay, I'm just going to take a couple more comments and then we'll move on. Yes, name and address. Uh, my name is Nancy Burns on 20 Pearl Street in Air. Um, I have been in Air for almost two years now. Um, and as far as um, communication with uh, the citizens of Air via the internet, I am already. Um, I receive all sorts of things from the, um, the town, um, more, you know, just all sorts of things. And I would support um, our town, my old town, my hometown, um, making use of whatever expertise in technology that you can get. 
Yes. Uh, Amy Tarlo Lewis at Three Omega Way. I don't know, you know, how Cami feels, but could you change the language to reflect something that the, the town can support? You know, for example, you know, for all boards and committees with staff. Because um, I understand it's a goal, and clearly it sounds like there's not the staff, and I can appreciate that. Um, but for those. Well, well, even to the point where it's a goal, if I, if I could, that the best entity to adopt the goals are the boards that would be carrying it out, as opposed to town meeting. Just because there's, there's no, what, the votes that town meeting takes should be binding. And th that particular vote, which it can't deliver, won't be binding unless there's buy-in from all of the affected boards, a number of whom are separately elected. So the best thing that we could do, I think, to, to try to achieve the spirit of what this petition asked for is to, con is to work with the, you know, I, I would dare say, let's focus on the regulatory boards, because those are the ones who are most likely to have staff. The other boards don't. I mean, we do, we do post all the agendas. We get them up there eventually. We do not post uh, the, you know, for for your, for the for all of the dozens of committees that we have. I just don't envision the time. Many of them don't have agenda packets to start with. They walk in with a single sheet of paper, as opposed to a, the file that we would have here. I mean, we can try to achieve getting information up, but many of the boards don't. They walk into their meeting with one sheet of paper. And just uh, another quick question: You talked about, you know. A database, a searchable database. Will things be searchable before or sort of after these meetings in the future? Well, the database will be searchable at whatever point the information gets up uploaded. Mm -hmm. So, in order for us to, I mean, we do have the procedure for the regulatory boards that the applicants are required to submit them in electronic form. Good. So that's a good starting point. Then what we need to have is a system that we apply uniformly across the various boards where those are getting uploaded to, to some kind of structure, some kind of architecture in the, in the website where even we know where it is. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we need to work on that. We're not, we're not there yet. We would love to be there. We applied for a grant uh, earlier this year. We didn't get it from the state to try to upload, to, to try to you know, uh, upgrade the website and to convert uh, all of our files to, uh, even our hard files to, for regulatory boards to electronic form so that we would have them. But I would, I would think our time would be better spent in, in like convening a, uh, a working group of the regulatory boards and the IT department and figuring out, well, how are we going to carry out the, the spirit of what this asked for? And I think that we, we would be able to deliver on whatever the results of that are. Yeah. I don't. I don't have confidence that we'd be able to deliver on whatever the precise language was of town meeting, and I'd then be concerned as what's the, what is the, um, the what's the sanction? What's the sanction? What's the what's the penalty for not? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I'd be concerned if that penalty goes to the applicant. So. Okay, guys. Okay. So we're gonna wrap this up. Mr. Sanders was <coughs> up next. Uh, George Sanders, 672 Great Road. On the petition, it seems to me that uh, if the town is in compliance uh, with the public uh, open meeting law, which means that that information being posted by the court, for the supporting documentation is what I'm sort of kind of sensing that uh, they want to know with the agenda as to what's going on. It's going to go before the board there. That's a lot of data, as this gentleman pointed out up here earlier. And the other thing that the town has to take in consideration is the cost. And it's almost impossible sometimes to put all the information there because it's going to drift in. You don't, you know, you can set deadlines, but it's going to drift in. And if it comes in after the, the meeting has been held, uh, you go ahead and post and they say, well, that was too late. It should have been beforehand. So it's a balance that really has to be worked out to try to come up with uh, what will be available and possible, is it possible to put on the agenda where the data may be located so people could go to that office and view it or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I just had one last question, which was really about the timeline. I mean, you say that this mm -hmm. is a project that is underway. 
I, mean, you, I think you mentioned January or something in, in your email back. January is the deadline, is the uh, implementation of the new public records law. Oh, okay. And so that's a new standard of, uh, that the state is um, requiring okay. for information to be available um, and in online. So we're okay. looking at... And so do we have to be in compliance by January or no. is there then no, a No, the law period? takes effect then. Okay. And that at, at for, so for any uh, website upgrades that that you that a community undertakes after that date they have to meet certain stand they will have to meet certain standards so if we were to undertake you know uh, an, an, an up, uh, a website upgrade which we will it will it will need to conform with the new mm -hmm. standards that the state is setting right so, yes one last one last question um, Katie Ruth Goldsmith Street. Um, I'm not going to put words in Cammie's uh, mouth or, you know, but I'm just wondering if, if this were simplified down to just requiring regulatory boards to post agendas electronically, which I know um, other towns have changed to make a requirement like the town of Tewksbury. They take the, the basic open meeting law, you have to post anything, and they have also reported to the Attorney General that they will post everything online as well. Um, and that wouldn't be an increase of information required. It would, I mean, it would be the agenda. Just upload it to the website. Just because it's really hard for busy families to trek over to the bulletin board back there, um, if that's really the only place where a meeting might be posted. So that, I mean, I know that other towns have codified this and registered a different location with the Attorney General. Keith, are there regulatory boards that don't already post their agenda online? Do we know? <coughs> On top of our heads. So I think we... we I mean, that's are there regulatory... The are there it's regulatory... No, there are no, all the regulatory boards do. It's the other... It's the many other boards the that we have. I mean, if you, you know... We establish we establish committees all the time too, and yeah. they post their agendas, yeah. and they may not even have a web page that where where one could then go to to find where their agendas. But regulatory yeah. boards should be doing that already. Regulatory boards are are um, should should be doing it absolutely, and I you know I wouldn't I wouldn't have any problem requiring that of regulatory boards. So. Okay. Good idea. Ladies and gentlemen, quickly just. We, we do sit here and we appoint people to committees and boards and, and um, positions and commissions. And oftentimes they're lay folks that haven't been on a committee before, so they don't know what the requirements are. And we almost, it might be worth our while to work with the town clerk to educate yeah. folks mm -hmm. that are, you know, it's kind of a train the trainer kind of yeah. thing. Train Teach the trainer. folks how to be a part of a board. You know, yeah. they have the, the clerk alerts them. They have to go through an ethics training. Yeah. They have to get sworn in. Yeah. So maybe there's another step that we can put in place. And these are the requirements that we have to do. Like so might be able to design something like that, along with the objective that we've taken on um, to try to be more transparent and more, um, you know, post more information, just just to help like folks that. to better understand what the expectations are. Right. Yeah, but either way, I don't think um, personally. I think we should mm -hmm. see where our goal goes. Mm -hmm. As you know, and not bring anything forward for an article this, for this meeting. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that, but I think that we can do a better job of, of oh, sure. helping sure, sure. folks that are stepping forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, oftentimes they're running out of the back of the room after we appoint them. We'll say, hey, don't forget to go to the town court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't know. They should show up the next meeting. Sure. They're not going to be able to vote because we didn't inform them that they had to go to the town court. It's right. Two pager. Yeah. There you go. That's all it is. Just yeah. say, thank you very much. Here's your... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Your employee yeah, when it's sworn yeah. in, the your employee town, yeah. yeah, your town clerk hands it to you. Right. There you go. Yeah. I like that. Good. Okay. okay. So that's right. one of three. One of three. Yes. Um, the, 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 Thank you, Kim. The second um, uh, petition uh, article that we, where we've been, where we had a, a draft shared with us, was for um, requirement. <clears throat> that all capital projects in, essa, in excess of a million dollars uh, be, must be approved by a townwide vote at the polls, regardless of funding source, um, and regardless of any requirements relative to 
a vote on said project at either a special or town meeting. Sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, name and address. Sorry, Brian Tarver, I've been torn of a babysitting issue. Could we take two and three out of order? Yeah, could I go next? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I've been torn of a babysitting issue. Could we take two and three out of order? Yeah, could I go next? <laughs> could be bossy. I just have a challenge um, here. Um, I need to get. Okay, that's on uh, a matter of procedure relative to expenditure in excess of 250000 of six or more eligible voting members of town meeting, request a ballot and checklist, then, then um, they'll proceed in that fashion rather than for a voice vote or hand count. Um, <clears throat> that is, um, uh, I, I'd say, as soon as I got this, the first two people that I forwarded that to with the town clerk was, would have to do the counting, and the moderator who would who would have to tell voters to cool their heels for the 20 minutes that it would take us to do the vote each vote. Um, this it's um, I mean it, it, it strikes me that this particular proposal you know you can bring it to town meeting you can get a vote on it. Um, I think that the 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 folks who would be most um, um, affected by it are the voters themselves who would have who would have to be committed to stay there for the additional time for, yeah, no, for each think, of the votes. Um, you know, one of the things I personally have experienced at town meeting is that voice vote um, has become a very aggressive shouting match um, mm -hmm. on some contentious issues. And then when it's too close to count, we go to the hand raising. Yeah. And sometimes we have hand counting that's, you know, sometimes, you know, it's the difference of like, six to ten people um, and with all due respect to people who are counting you know there's going to be a margin of error in the counting in there with, with all their good intentions um, and I think you know if if there is an issue that isn't important enough to a bunch of people that we can kind of skip the voice count and the hand counting and go right to a more accurate um, ballot vote I mean I would never want nor expect people you know if the school wants to spend a quarter of a million dollars on our part <coughs> surprise that we're all going to slow down the process to do checks and balances but the issues that are really important that we can all take that moment and do like a very kind of civilized ballot count I think it also gives people some privacy I know there have been issues that I voted and I sort of wish I didn't have to do that in public um, and so I think my petitions would have addressed as many of those issues um, yeah. and I'm, I'm quite not you know I'm not quite worried about people's yeah. time in yeah. that sense. I my, think my recollection down was that this proposal might have been one of the ones that was considered and, uh, by the uh, uh, study committee to increase voter participation. There have been many such measures. We've been looking at you know what what are the ways to do it. My I've, I've worked in this is my fifth town. This is the only sh this town that shouts during votes. That the other towns I've been to have hand counts. So I was, I was kind of taken back in my first town meeting when it was the volume of the room as opposed. You know, I they had seen some very aggressive discussions, and then when it came time to a vote, it was, you know, the, the, it was the aggressiveness with which they raised their hand as opposed to shouting their voice. It's just the decorum was a little. It's, that's one way to calm them down, maybe, is hand counts, but. I mean, I would only see this really being enacted for some of the really important issues, and we have a lot of important issues coming before the town, and I think this is as good as time in any to add, you know, a better process or procedure in place. I think for me, I, I, I see, again, I, I see the heart of where you're getting at, but if you just think about how many things are over $250,000 and waiting around to count that every single time, and it may not be such a contentious vote, only 10 people may have disagreed. This is a, it's going to make town meeting um, very administrative. So I think, I think people would only do it for really big issues. I don't think. Well, your motion wanna... says any expenditure over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's true, but I think people would only do that for you know big issues that are facing our town. I don't think people would bother. If six or more eligible voting members request a ballot. So all you need is six people to disagree with the masses and. And then it's a big issue well, six, in a sense. Six is sort of based off Roger's rules, so sort of just a benchmark. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. Six yeah. people disagree at two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we're going to get that out all the time. And it'll be a procedure. It's not something we can choose or not to do. It. I know. I know. We would be well informed to hear what the moderator and yeah. cleric yes. feels about it because they would be the most effective. Mm -hmm. I, if I can, just yes. Two two points. One is I. Um, 
it's more a question than a, uh, than a, uh, a statement. But I believe the uh, you know the cow meeting by statute is pretty well under the control of the moderator, and we're not really you know there is rules and law about what they uh, you know what kind of limitations you can put on it. And there's a lot of latitude given to the moderator. That I think you know uh, Keith is right. We probably need to get uh, input back as to what uh, you know what's even doable. And the second thing is uh, on the point of um, Privacy. I, I think that just runs counter to what the whole point of town meeting is. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, representative body of everybody in town who wants to but show when up. Vote for the president, we get to vote. That's, well, that's, that's you know, the this, the that town have. government is uh, the open town meeting is a, is a legislative body, and that's the, you yeah. know, it's an open vote. It's like Congress or or the state legislature. Yeah, with towns in Massachusetts, there's two types of town meetings. There's a, an open town meeting, which we have, or a representative town meeting, where the voters, in the privacy of the ballot elect town meeting members who then go to town meeting and vote in the open. So um, in either case, the, what you see is the, is the openness of the act of town meeting. And, and so the only place where it's not is at the ballot. Yeah, I say oh, additionally, I mean, I stood up at the microphone at town meeting and asked for a ballot and checklist and was denied. And I know someone else has stood up at the microphone and asked for a ballot and checklist and was denied. Um, I think it's important it happens when people make that request and it's it doesn't get honored. And that's at the discretion of the moderator. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Who is an elected official. Right. And when, when I asked, they said, well, we don't have the stuff with us. And I was like, well, you should have been prepared for it. No, they, they always have the equipment to deal with that. Yes. Yeah, Human uh, James Kennedy, 50 Kelsey Road. <clears throat> is there any technology could, that could help with this? I mean, we're driverless cars. You know, we're in a society that. that well, we even has looked at great that. Yeah, voteless, voteless voters. iPhones. We uh, have these town meetings. Maybe at most 400 people come. Could there be some type of handout technology that can make? Well, we even looked at that. Yeah. And we had a demonstration of an electronic voting yeah. thing, and just America's Got Talent. What if the number was changed? The number of people that step forward to make it a. Uh, again, I, I Madam <coughs> Chair. I defer back to uh, any any decision or any any conversation until we hear back from uh, um, town clerk and water 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 water. Water. Mm -hmm. so that's we'll it's their town gig in, in, in town well town council too but it's their it's their show so when can I expect to hear back on that so I know what the next step well, is well they're both separately elected officials so we can ask them okay. and you can ask them okay <laughs> so but we can't command either one of them so. Mr. Sanders, you have your hand next. Uh, George Sanders, 672 Great Road. I think that uh, the amount of $250,000, uh, that's not a kind of small amount in one sense, but I understand what the lady is saying here. Um, the time that, I, I find that if the $250,000 increased the taxes, yes. Uh, if it doesn't increase the taxes and it's not outside the levy, uh, Pacific, what would be her point of having to vote for it? The article by people voting in the privacy of a ballot or what have you. If it's not outside the levy and it doesn't increase the taxes, uh, what would be the main purpose of uh, having an item that's 250 to be voted in that manner? I would like to know. Again, again, to uh, the chair, please. Oh, to the chair. Oh, sorry. Um, to you, Tara, the chair. The roots, the rear leg away. Getting running start on town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, it's to improve the culture of town meeting, to improve the accuracy of the counting, um, to give people the opportunity to. Um, you know, to have some privacy with their voting. Um, yeah, and because in the past I've asked and other people have asked for a ballot checklist and it's been denied. Um, okay, Mr. Tarbox and the address. Brian Tarbox, um, 16 Pleasure Lane. I have to say, while there are regulatory reasons that give the moderator certain control, the notion that town, that town meeting is his gig, mm -hmm. I, I, I take real offense to that. It's our gig. It's not, it's not one elected official's gig to run as 
as, as, a, as a private show. We get to pick the bylaws that we want to uh, make the town meeting the way we want. And, and I think we're all kind of tired of the Scream Fest that's just, just driving us apart. And I think one of the reasons for the number six was a lot of people don't know that, but there's already a, a, a rule about town meeting that you can, if six people stand up after a vote, you can say, I doubt the count. And then it has to go to the, to the next process. Um, and I think the, part of the intention of this bylaw was that if we do the Scream Fest, then six people stand up and say, well, I doubt the count. And then you go to the, the time of the hand count and say, well, I still doubt the, doubt the count. I think it might actually, on some of these contentious issues, be, be faster to go uh, di directly to uh, you know, uh, a, a less intimidating and more accurate approach. Um, in answer to this gentleman's question, we did look at electronic voting measures, and we were told that uh, $10,000 was too expensive, even though we spent more than that in the link of it. Per town meeting. Yeah. It's in the snow budget. Yeah, per town. So a, let me clarify one thing too. Per town meeting. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me clarify. When I said that, I meant um, that <coughs> the town moderator controls town meeting. Okay, that's what I meant by that. So uh, I don't I want to miss. I, okay. I don't want you to misinterpret that, Brian. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm just that's saying, saying. We get. I mean, it's it's our town. We get to set. I our absolutely. Level. But the town moderator runs town meeting. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. He's the presiding officer, just as our exactly. chair is presiding. So exactly. Shall we go to the third? Yes, please. Petition. Yes. And uh, the. Uh, we had a. Uh, you didn't answer the question. She said, "When could she hear back from?" Well, we don't know. The authorities. Uh, yeah, okay. I need to check in, and she, you'll check in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I would not. I would out. not deign to set a deadline for either, either one of them, but I've yeah. contacted them, and if if you do as well, then between the two of us, we'll okay. triangulate. We'll get them. All right. Thank you. They may be watching now, although I doubt it. So. <laughs> Okay, then we have a proposal that all capital projects in SS so the million dollars would have to be approved by a ballot question. And on this one, um, ultimately, I, I probably want to be on uh, safer ground by having council looked at it, but I, I did my own legal research and and con from which I would conclude that town meeting doesn't does not have the authority to regulate elections. Short answer. The longer answer is the state constitution does not grant cities and towns the ability to regulate elections on their own, and the only way that we can regulate elections is basically with the with the uh, permission of the state, and that and that comes in two forms. And I'm, and I'm talking about um, binding ballot questions, by the way. And I should mention that you that you can you can always have a non-binding question for for public, for public advisory purposes, but those are by definition non-binding, which I don't think is what you're looking at. We a few years ago we put one on to see how people would feel about no smoking ban. I think, or, I think the pains you throw. Away yeah, the or, or yeah, or something. But in any event, looking looking at uh, how do you how do you get a binding ballot question requirement um, that it. There are two ways, either that there's a general law that allows you to do it, such as Proposition 2 and a half, which specifically, where the state specifically prescribes to the cities and towns how you can, you know, what matters are subject for a debt exclusion or a Prop 2 and a half override or a capital exclusion. In those cases, the, the state law prescribes how the town meeting vote is, can be made contingent upon a ballot question. And then the result of the two together is, is binding. Um, the adoption of the Community Preservation Act is another one. And these are examples that I got from the Attorney General's website in a section on local ballot questions. Um, and in fact, for, be, for any ballot questions, if, there are, if there's money being exp expended on the outcome of those, then they're subject to political reporting requirements, just like a, camp, just like a public campaign. Um, the uh, so there are there are two um, two specific examples I came I came across in the in the literature that the attorney general's office had. One was that if you if we were a representative town meeting, and we talked 
you know, just a few minutes ago about the difference between open and representative. In a town, there is a general law that says in, in any town that has a representative town meeting, following a vote of that town meeting, within seven days, three, a, by petition, 3% of the, of the registered voters can, can call into question the vote that was taken and require that there be a ballot question to either uphold or overturn the vote. Nothing's pro there's no there's no example of something prospective that says categorically, as in this one, anything over a million dollars has to be a ballot question. There's no there's no legal requirements in the in the in, in the state law that point to anything similar, anywhere. Uh, the the other example is if in a community without a representative town meeting, for any community that adopts a charter, which we do not have a charter. But in any community that has a charter, you can put your own referendum procedures in it. And the, I came across a dozen or so uh, communities that had, that had language, and it was invariably some very, uh, something very similar to that statute about the, the, the within seven days and 3%. It might be within 10 days and 5%, within, within seven days and 10% of the registered voters to challenge a vote that had already taken place, but there was no example where there was a, where the state had, had uh, approved a procedure where prospectively there were, a policy was set that said if it's over a certain amount, then there must be a ballot question. It's that town meeting gets to vote, and, in, and it's usually, if it's an open town meeting, it's very seldom that, you know, it's the voters themselves that go up at town meeting, so the voters don't have the ability to then by petition, quash the will of the voters. Uh, but if it's representatives at a, repres at, a, at a representative town meeting, the voters do have the ability to, to, to quash what those representatives do. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think we can do it. So, so Keith, I, I think you know what I'm trying to, trying to accomplish. I mean, essentially codify the policy that, that this board and FinCom School Committee <coughs> Um, agree to and um, I mean trying to ac accomplish two goals and I'm open to you know if this doesn't work I'm, op I'm open to other ways but the, the, the two goals are essentially that one is to keep us in uh, good shape with the bond rating agency who basically said that you know if we if we didn't follow these kind of policies as a policy you know they have they reserve the right to re-lower our bond rating and the other is if we're going to spend, you know, I mean, we're in a time of triage where everything, you know, there, there's a, we can't do everything we want, obviously, and so it's all it's all triage and trying to decide what gets done. And with all due respect to town meeting, you know, it's 250, 300 people or so who show up at a particular hour on a particular day. Most of us who are parents, only one of us gets to go. You know, if we're on a business trip, you can't go. It's 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 a one shot, and to have 300 people vote on a million dollars, you know, this million dollars versus that million dollars, versus the 3,000 or so people who get to vote um, at an election, where you can vote all day, you can vote absentee. I'm trying to get basically more representative de decision making, um, uh, and uh, and and keep us happy with the bond agencies and, and you know this isn't to stop any particular project I mean if you're gonna spend if you're gonna spend a million dollars and you need to, you need to get town-wide buy-in you know more than 300 people well if you get the if you get town-wide buy-in great carry on whatever project you want that's how it's supposed to work um, and if you can't get the buy-in not but so that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to accomplish and I'm just wondering if, if you can see any way to to do that because the, the, the problem is when we, we all get excited about our individual project, you're like, oh, I got to do this project now, 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 and we get, you know, it's like I can get I can get 300 people to town meeting, and I can win, and it's like, and if you start, get 400, you can. Yeah, okay. I think but, that's but, the magic but, number. But, that's the but, magic number. Yeah. Okay, it's changed over. <laughs> Depends on town meeting. We have a town meeting where it's 90. But there's 200 people. that we know how they're going to vote, so it's the other 200 yeah. that can. Yeah. But but wouldn't it be vote. great to get the 3,000? You know, for a million bucks. So I'm, I'm just trying. I'm trying to accomplish what I think are a couple of reasonable goals. So uh, the only comment I have, Madam Chair, if I may, is uh, you know I think uh, AAA bond rating that we've 
enjoyed for the past six years, I believe. Um, are there triple A's? Fewer than that. Fewer than that. Triple A, than that? Triple a just to four. Well, at any rate, for 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 as long as we have. have. As Surprised long as we have, uh, is based upon the policies that exist today. I think that, um, from down. my from my perspective, uh, um, and based on me knowing Mr. Bergman and his research, is uh, you know, and, and the ability for this not to go through, I think our 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 financial policies um, yeah. continue. My, yeah, my biggest concern with continue this one to get AAA ratings. Right. Right. So, and and my biggest concern with this article, why which fix I, something that's not? Yeah, broken. I th I think it's not enforceable, and I would be concerned if it passed. How what our bond rating agencies would think when we then didn't have, or couldn't, um, pull off an election? I mean, again, the law is the law, and and to and to pass a, you know, you need a two thirds vote of town meeting for borrowing, and if that's it, and you get that, that's. But, but then what do the bonding rating agencies do with, well, you have this other vote of town meeting, the 200, 300 people that happen to be there in one day passed a vote, um, which arguably is not binding on future town meetings if it's not in, you know, if it's, if it's, if it's not a bylaw or if it's not a, um, which is, has to be approved by the attorney general. See, I don't, I don't think this could even be put in a form of a bylaw that the attorney general would approve because it's because it seeks to regulate elections, which, which can only be done by the state, not by the town. So I, with, I think what you're left with is is the is for this subject matter to be the sub to be determined by policy, well, with of the selectment of the finance committee. Well, sorry, again, if I may. Um, and it is policy, and you guys have voted on it, but, but I then, and, and FinCom at a meeting last month reaffirmed that policy. So, you know, at a certain level, I should sleep well at night, but it just, it just as, as, as uh, you know, emotions run high for particular projects, I just have concern that sometimes people say, oh, policy doesn't apply today for whatever reason. You know, although that's why you have policy. Mr. Sanders. George Sanders, 672 Big Boy. The thing that uh, I find that is sort of kind of difficult to understand is that the town makes an effort for the town meeting <coughs> to send notice out to the 3,600 households and the 60 business taxpayers saying this is what's going to be coming at the town meeting. And if you take that number, it's 6,664 people that are registered voters. Taking on the average two per house, that means you reach all the voters, which is 6,000. Now, if they read this document and they see what is there, they have the right at that time to so, say, you know, I'm going to be at that town meeting and I'm going to vote on this or that. I don't see where Lilton can do much more than what you're doing now in terms of sending that information out to them and it's getting into the household and the taxpayers have the opportunity to read it and go to town meeting. I, I, I really don't see too much more that the town can do. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, we have gone way over, and I do apologize for that, but I think it was important while we had the submitters in the room, we could have a discussion on how we felt, get at the heart of, of what they were trying to get at and share our concerns. Yeah. So We didn't want town meeting to be the first time we had this discussion. Exactly, which right. could have been. Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay, so to tie us back in, speaking of we can't do everything we want, let's at least um, go through what articles we feel comfortable with um, inserting. I took a little tally here. If you guys are ready for me to spot off numbers and follow along. Okay. One, bill the prior years. Two, um, state minimum wage. Three, 17 budget adjustments. Seven, recent unborrowing, unused borrowing authority. Nine, mill pond restoration. 10, acquire extension property for a donation. 
uh, 14, restrict development for tax title properties on Narcissus Road, and 16, establish OPEB liability trust fund. That last one might be shaky, but those are throw in 11 to throw the, in the 11. last DOT. Uh, we don't want to put five in for white? For five. Five, five, five is seven? Five. Seven, we don't know oh. if it's going to be necessary. Uh, that, I don't know. Wait. Keep these are those for public? public handout? Or is that, what is that? Does that show? The, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. We just didn't know what they were. Yeah, that's uh, the press no packet. Good. The press packet, but there's no press here. <laughs> press oh. freeze on. Does that have all that? Yes. And then yeah. Melissa went on to some other, oh, yeah. some yeah. other paper. Oh, did she? Mm -hmm. There's only one Melissa again. <laughs> uh, five, five also. Yeah, five. Any others? I got two marks. Can wait as well. Which one? I got can wait on. No, I don't have that one actually. I have twelve and seventeen on can wait. Eight. One did the last one. Well, tw twelve yeah. can wait. Tw twelve. Twelve will be to consider before the warrant process. Right. Right. Oh. So when you say can can we can we I thought it, we don't need we? it tonight we no 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 yeah. we don't have to vote on it tonight right all right right now oh so sorry so I misunderstood that one then we seventeen then. so on fourteen did we um fourteen fourteen narcissus so we had some conversation around language for that and that's this is from time that's a yeah town council wrote the okay so not ready you asked no it's ready no, it's ready it's no, ready it's ready fourteen's ready. But six alumni field, I mean, uh, the renovation's there. So we're, we're only waiting for the dollar amount. I don't yep. know why we can't insert it now. Yeah, if you're not ready, we can just... Yeah. Yeah. Did you have four on that list? Or is it, uh, no, 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 no we don't. We're not, numbers. we're not done with well, all right, we're not done with it. All right, I'm just misinterpreting what was yeah. being attempted here. For, sorry, yeah, for tonight, what are we ready to insert? Yeah. So let me go through again. One, two, three, five... Six, seven, nine, ten, fourteen, sixteen. Cool. Yeah, can you add eleven? Uh, surplus mass DOT. Yes. Are we yeah, yeah, we good with that? Because yeah, they the state wants us to be proceeding with that or I'll still sell it. Okay. Okay. Fine by me. Sound good for tonight and then next week we so the rest of the Do I have a motion to insert those articles made by? Move the board of select and vote to insert the following articles onto the warrant for November 16, 2016, special town meeting, subject to the approval as to town council. Specify Article 1, bills of prior year. Article 2, amended classification compensation plan. Article 3, FY17, budget amendments. Article 5, fire station facility expansion construction. Article 6, alumni field renovation. Seven, rescind unused bond uh, authority for Church Meadows. Um, nine, uh, the Mill Pond Restoration Feasibility Study Supplemental Funding. Ten, acquire Stenstrom property, Mill Pond Restoration pro property. Eleven, acquire ma uh, surplus mass dot property for conservation purposes. Twelve, acquire Joyce William property for conservation purposes. Uh, 14, restrict development for tax title property on Narcissus. And 15, 16, I'm sorry, 16, establish other post re, uh, employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. So move and second. All those, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Very good. Great job, team. All right, we can knock this one out pretty quickly, I think. Selectman member to the personnel board. So we had Selectman Vice Chair DeCoos that was on the, is currently on, sorry, the personnel board. Um, we've got him on a couple different things and they tend to be during the day. So from an availability perspective, thought it'd be better maybe to see if another Selectman would be cool to take it. And Joe, I know I knocked on your door because you're kind of in town available during the days when the rest of us are maybe not. Um, so that was my idea, make the swap. Everyone's cool. Well, I was like to pick up your part of the stipend. <laughs> Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to the town code subsection 32-2 to appoint Selectman Joseph Knox to the personnel board for Second. term expiring June 30, 2018. So move and second all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. So 8.30 tomorrow morning. Yes. <laughs> 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 Just in time on that.
Uh, Joe's not a morning guy, really. When you see his emails that come in after midnight, you might know what time of the day he prefers. <laughs> and typically, the board of selectmen representative brings coffee and donuts to the whole. Thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely got to give him your stipend. <laughs> I'll give you the tiger card. <laughs> For 10 bucks. <laughs> okay. All right. Very important topic. Um, and I think uh, Selectman Glavy and, oh my gosh, who's your counterpart? Oh, sorry for, for helping and being the champions on this one. So the Littleton Commerce Sewer Strategic Plan update. So tonight we wanted to just get a pulse uh, uh, where we're at and so we'll have more discussions, but I wanted to have a check in. Yeah, if, if I might, Madam Chair. Please. Okay, yeah, Chuck and I, uh, we compared notes last week after uh, the board appointed, I think it was on August 22nd, we adopted this as a, as one of the, uh, ten, with the ten goals, general goals we have, Keith, um, mm -hmm. and uh, recognizing very much that the board it's in the top ten, from the top ten, made the list. But but that's and therein that's a good segue. That's been a problem is that getting getting off the schnei, as it were, uh, with with this topic. Uh, a lot of good work's been done in the past, but it's been kind of stalled. And I think the last time it was. Uh, Address. There was a great, uh, a lot of work done in, at a great level of detail. Uh, Mr. Zimmerman, Bob Zimmerman's here tonight. He was a part of that effort. Thank you for coming, Bob. Uh, uh, I think it's important uh, to decide uh, what to do next. That, uh, from my perspective, anyways, that we should uh, um, take stock of where we left things. Uh, if I remember correctly, there were just a couple of items uh, that were keeping it from being brought to the town for a vote at that time, which was probably, what, two years ago? Uh, maybe more? Uh, yeah, it's more almost, now. It's almost four. Almost four. And we were really, at that point, just looking to confirm, I believe, what businesses or property owners were going to tie in and then get some uh, some questions answered to the, uh, the financial... Uh, structure of the, of the process but beyond that we were ready to move forward and uh, you know for whatever reasons political or otherwise it's you know it hasn't hasn't been revisited and uh, so I, I think uh, you know that's why I asked uh, you know Keith to distribute for us the last uh, printed material that the, uh, the uh, January uh, 2013 that the feasibility committee had uh, generated and um, sent out a couple of late emails asking folks to, to come tonight that have shown interest in this project in the past. Just to remind ourselves why this topic of the common sewering uh, and, and sewering in general, uh, you know, has been before the town, where its importance lies prospectively for the town, and what we should do next. Uh, I think the anticipation before was that we were closing in on a funding article to do um, you know, a design or a study or something along those lines. So, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I wanted to uh, get that in front of the board, see if board members had different reactions, specifically my, my colleague here, uh, Chuck, uh, you know, and then talk a little bit about, um, you know, what we conceivably can do, what we need to do between now and, and November, if indeed we're going to go forward with an article. Uh, and, uh, and I'd love to have participation from the public, especially former feasibility member uh, Bob Zimmerman, or for those who don't know him as well, former Board of Health member and the Executive Director of the Charles River Minister Association, and in internationally recognized <laughs> environmental <laughs> expert. Uh, <laughs> and my mother loves me too. Yeah. So anyway, uh, check the, the... No, I think you got the uh, good summary, and that's pretty much where we're at. You know, we had some conversations and talked about uh, the, the benefits and oftentimes people think of it just as an economic benefit but there's certainly there's much greater benefits and I would see the economic benefit being a byproduct of us doing something uh, with soaring in the, in the common area but um, certainly health reasons better water quality and I'm sure Mr. Zimmerman has uh, can speak much more intelligently to those those aspects of doing something with sewer in the common mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that state of our, um, what's it called, but, you know, things being in failure and, and state of the health aspect, I know that was one we wanted to dig up what we where we were, but also get a pulse on where we're at now because it's even worse. Yeah, in fact, uh, the, uh, the, 
that's been part of the frustration over the past few years is how we've lost sight of how this issue originally came before us. It was more to health and the water department who, who initially proposed to the selectmen years ago that we consider sewering for uh, reasons for groundwater protection and and, uh, and maybe um, if the chair doesn't mind, maybe we can have Mr. Zimmerman kind of bring us back in time and, uh, and, and to your question, you know, where were we and where are we and on that <coughs> end of it. My name is Bob Zimmerman. I'm from 83 Sanderson Road here in town. Uh, and this has been an issue um, on my mind in the front and the back for a very long time. Uh, one of the things that I think the board needs to be aware of is that the, the original concern is that the nitrate level uh, in the groundwater in the town common area is high. Uh, the normal background level of nitrates um, in groundwater are one milligram per liter, okay? Uh, at 20 milligrams per liter, uh, or right around that, 18 to 22, um, you can cause serious health problems uh, for children under 18 months old and for people with compromised immune systems and for those like me over the age of 65. Um, serious, like death and stuff like that. They can't uh, take up oxygen from their blood because the nitrate level is so high. The common area has been, the, the nitrate level has been rising over time. And when we studied uh, this in 2010 through 2012, the ambient nitrate level in the town common area was five to seven milligrams per liter. We're in a drought. Droughts reduce the amount of groundwater and therefore concentrate remaining pollutants. Let's hope nobody's going out and doing any tests right now because I can tell you that once we cross 10 milligrams per liter, the town will have no choice about sewers. The State Department of Environmental Protection will come in and visit and order the town to sewer. And my great fear there is that there are now uh, and have been for six or seven years, some pretty sizable grants available to um, uh, towns like Littleton that pursue uh, sewering that also has environmental and energy benefits. And it would be really unfortunate to find ourselves in a position where we're doing something fairly innovative uh, and economically uh, desirable, uh, but not be able to take advantage um, of, the, of the grants to the, uh, uh, the Clean Water Trust. Uh, there's something like 50 or 60 million dollars there available for projects like the smart sewer stuff we, we did in uh, 2010 to 2012. So I, I give that as a warning that the sooner the town addresses this, uh, the more likely the town will be able to um, build the necessary structures at something that looks extremely reasonable, uh, likely to be even profitable, uh, given the energy generation um, that we identified uh, in the work we did in 2010, 2011. So I throw that out there. And then there are the economic concerns. I live in town, I've lived in town since 1992. I do get a property tax bill, and I've noticed that since 2002, it has a steep rise associated with it. And yet we, even though I'm paying a lot more, I think all of us are paying a lot more, town services are at risk. You know, we're constantly looking for the mo uh, money to keep the police and fire going, and you know, uh, road service and re uh, good repair and that sort of thing. Um, and so the likelihood is if we don't have uh, a, a spike to commercial property tax income like a sewer could provide us, that's all going to rest on our shoulders as residents. So I see it too, and I'm, I, this is for me selfishly, you know, I'd like to see some stabilization to my property tax rates uh, into the future. I mean, there's a good chance I'm going to retire in the next two or three years. And um, I'm looking at, you know, a vastly more fixed income uh, under those circumstances. It would be good for us to be in a position to stabilize property tax rates uh, and provide uh, a lot of amenities that we can't 
currently provide. I, I feel really badly for the guy that just opened this bookstore, which is a really cool thing to do, and he can't serve coffee. Are you kidding me? Um, so, okay, I've, I've made my, my <laughs> points here. But the key is the warning. Once we cross 10 milligrams per liter in groundwater in town, make no mistake, DEP can turn around and order the town to take care of this. And with some sort of immediacy so that to your point, yeah, you could wait for the grants and that kind of thing. We won't qualify for them. On the, on the environmental, like a, the closest thing we have to a, a water expert here is uh, scarily enough our water commissioner Jim Carr. But uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, commissioner. But the uh, the other part of the water quality part is that is that our well sites are all uh, are are upgradient of the common areas. So the usage is heavy, and the, and the disposal and the septic systems in the common area is downgradient from the wells to replenish the wells just for water supply, never mind water uh, quality, uh, you know, we very much needed a sewer system for that purpose, just to shoot the water back to uh, your wells. Um, right. So there's I that. Mean, and not only to that point, but um, as Mr. Zimmerman said, you know, we're, we're in a drought, and, you know, uh, those wells <coughs> in the lower half of town, they're not getting the replenishment of those aquifers, aren't getting the water back to where it should be. So um, it's even more relevant this year because of the situation the, the drought situation we're in so right. you know um, yeah. having 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 that been said if we had if we had acted upon this back <clears throat> in uh, 12 13 you know we may have been helping out our walls down down uh, the, the, the Western part of town. I, and I'll, I'll make two more points of advocacy, Madam Chair, and then I would ask uh, Bob, uh, as, a, as the only other member of the committee here, to answer one other question before I shut up for a little bit. But on, in terms of advocacy on the on the economic development side, so so fine, we do it for purely environmental reasons. Appropriate enough. There's reason enough right there. Uh, and this is nothing magic. The towns have been doing sewers and funding them for a hundred years. They, you know, they pay for themselves through a betterment process. That's, there's really nothing to be scared there as long as we uh, do things right and we know we have the financial team in place that's not going to screw this thing up uh, from that standpoint as long as there are people that are going to hook into it. But you know, if you look at the goals that the planning board of the town adopted with the overlay district zoning, and we've noticed that a lot of that hasn't happened. Well, why hasn't it happened? We give we give property owners the opportunity to do all sorts of wonderful things until they run into uh, you know the restrictions. the restrictions of, of serving. So we have next to no restaurants and very limited usage. The, and then the worst part on that is, well, if you can't really do anything at the common area, what do people end up doing in terms of development? They they spread out. The sp you know, what we have in place now is an invitation to sprawl if we want to you know if we want to, uh, to to change that then we should give people a greater incentive to develop businesses that we want in the places where we want them and that you know the common is one area I wouldn't restrict it to that but that's certainly the place to start and that's ground zero um, you know I, I noticed uh, you know Jim Kennedy's here I don't know if he wants to chime in or not but uh, you know representative of the business community there's a lot of businesses that we don't have in town that we could have in town if we have sewering um, and then in the, the final point I'd make too in terms of timing um, mentions been uh, made of uh, you know what we've missed in the past in terms of uh, of uh, you know grant opportunities, uh, what we could miss if we're under order as opposed to doing it voluntarily. Let me just suggest that regardless of who wins the presidential election, much like eight years ago, whether it's President Trump or President Clinton, they're probably probably the only thing they're going to get a Republican Congress to agree on is a uh, is an infrastructure uh, bill of some scale. So I'll bet you we'll be in a position where we where we were prospectively eight years ago to get you know had we had our sewer plan in place to be reimbursed can't promise that but I think we're we're our timing could be very um, fortuitous you know in order to benefit from you know some sort of federal monies down the road in any event if we don't you know if we don't get something off the ground what we get you know we can be guaranteed of nothing so. and, and to your point Paul uh, you know take a ride those those storefronts that have been vacant uh, when this first this feasibility study started are still vacant right there has been no upgrade, so. And just to piggyback on that, um, 
master plan, uh, actually Keith mentioned at the beginning of the uh, meeting, master plan uh, next community forum will be a charrette down at the common right. and part of that is <clears throat> You know, really envisioning what the common would look like, what businesses would be there, and the whole foundation of making that vision happen is exactly this. And just even going a little bit further, if if that vision has economic development in the, in the way of small businesses, there's a lot of buildings down there right now that are vacant on the storefront level, but commercial businesses could be. Um, become mixed-use properties where right. you can have residential upstairs so and you cool. could we could integrate yeah. a walking community downtown yes. where some of the seniors some of the younger residents that are coming back from college and want to live in Littleton yeah. will have an opportunity to, to, to and at night you can actually have people walking around downtown exactly. Littleton yeah. Yeah. Not be a right. ghost look, at, look yeah. at downtown Lexington or you know some of some of the communities that have done some of that mixed use with yeah. a, a, a vibrant downtown area with with residential above commercial it, it and we've got some, some great opportunities with what Northern Bank and Trust has started to acquire a pretty large swath of land that backs up to Robinson Road. And they, you know, we could work with them and say, hey, yes. do something like this rather than throwing up a, a, a strip of stores with nothing on top of it. Or office buildings. Or, office or another buildings bank. Or a nail salon. If, yeah. I, if I could, Matt, <clears throat> when we get back into this too, I hopefully we can let the public know, educate the public, because what happened? When, when it gets stalled, we all saw it get stalled for wrong reasons of fear of what I, I, would, I would hear, oh, the common's going to grow into this enormous thing and we're going to have all these things we don't want, um, and the cost, the town's going to be you know, liable for the whole thing. I think those are the two major issues that, that get sidelined the environmental and it sidelined anything that could have helped uh, economically. But I think that was enough to, to stall it. And I think it would be our job and the job of a, the community that gets formed is to work on those two things to get past that so we can make the positive move to get, uh, get going. You actually scared me when you talked about the environmental. I knew after being in the common for a long time it was... It was always an issue when we talked about no stores being there. I look at them all, all the time, the vacant buildings, but I had no idea how serious that environmental issue actually was. Just on, on the issue of th things that went wrong last time, there was an organized opposition group. There was no organized support group. Right. That's none. True. None. And I mention that only because I built a sewer in, in Provincetown. It's so, I, I, when I left nine years ago, they finished phase two. They're now done with phase four, and there and there was a very organized business community that wanted the sewer. Any public meeting, when we discussed it, sure there were there were groups, there were naysayers, there were uh, some environmental groups that didn't want development, didn't didn't and thought the sewer would you know you know they said well the the tide cleans out the harbor twice a day so we don't need a sewer. Uh, but we needed one, and there was an organized business group that's, that stood up to the plate, and we could always count on to, to be at public meetings, help sway the, the, uh, the, the population, and show up at town meeting and, and make sure it happened because they saw, I mean, I had one hot hotel there who his, uh, his uh, assessment was going to be $900,000, which he'd pay off over 20 years. But you know what? It allowed him to get out of the sewer business himself because that's what he paid for his to upgrade his wastewater treatment facility at a very environmentally sensitive site. But he and the other businesses were powerful supporters for sewer, and without that, I you know we got to work on that. Excellent point, right, Keith. right away. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's or, else, or else it's 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 going not going to. Yeah, that's the big challenge. You're absolutely right. So what say you, Jim? <laughs> Yeah, so, sure, uh, I'm representing the Business Association today, and um, you know we're very. Most business owners in our association are very interested in seeing the common have a sewer, and um, you know, number one to uh, fill some of the vacancies, number two to have more consistent foot traffic in the common, could generate more business for some of the property owners, some of the businesses that are already established in the commons. Um, I'm also coming at this with a unique understanding where I had a business and I operated a business in the common. So uh, I personally experienced 
you know, less, you know, less business, uh, financial difficulties because of uh, a common that was not vibrant mm -hmm. economically. Um, also, looking at the town in general, there were surveys done <clears throat> by Economic Development Committee on what people in town would like to see for businesses. And the top 10, most of them were uh, businesses that needed a sewer, florist, uh, restaurants, coffee all shops. these things, <laughs> coffee shops that improve the, the social atmosphere uh, of the town are all in need of sewers. So this is a timely thing. Um, and so maybe we can tap into that engine to right. re-garner that support and, and see what the audience is out there and the appetite is yeah. and address concerns. And, and, and to Joe's point, you know, not market, but position it in the right way so that people understand what it really means to them. Well, I, I think both Joe and Keith are, are right on top. I mean, Keith having, you know, lived the, this before uh, and remembering just what we went through a few years ago, yeah, uh, op the opposition was organized and shame on us for not doing a better job of both getting our message right, as Joe said, and getting the, the troops out. I mean, that's, you know, that's good, fair, you know, the political end of the, the government business. You know, you, 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 you make your case and you bring out your supporters. So, uh, you know, I, mean, I know we don't have too many other citizens here, but I'd be anxious to hear from them. Then I think it's important for Chuck and I to kind of go off and, you know, meet with some of these folks, uh, the, the regulatory boards that, you know, should have interest, Board of Health, Water Commissioners, Planning Board, and, uh, you know, the former members of the uh, Sewers Feasibility Committee and, and report back, you know, see where we, where we can go on that. We, you know, we need to come up with dollar figures. I don't know if you remember, Bob, what the last uh, running estimate was when it was on the table before. Yeah, I know. I remember all that. But before I tell you what those things are, and a couple of new items on that. Um, she's had her hand yeah. up for quite a while. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Sanders is as well. Yep, I'll get to you both. Okay, yes. Um, I am appalled by the emergency situation. I think the first thing that we need to do is alert the town about the emergency water situation. And I would ask how long has it been that that people in town, how many people have known about this emergency? Oh, hi. I mean, are people going around innocently drinking the water? First off, no. Let me, let me please, correct you there. Please, let me correct please, you there. No, please, ma'am, ma'am, you're not, you're not a resident in town. I, I represent the board, the water commissioners. We send out a water quality report every year per the DEP. Water in town is very clean. So air has sewer. You don't have to worry about that. We, we'll, we'll deal with our residents in town, but thank you. Mr. Sanders. Uh, George Sanders, 672 Great Road. Uh, it's always nice to uh, hear people talk about the environment. <coughs> I was in the environmental field before EPA came into existence. So you got somebody that knows a little bit about the environment as well. And I've been around where they put in the, the treatment plants. Uh, if the commercial and business and then wants to uh, uh, put this system in, I think that's a good thing. That, uh, because you got to go and look at it at some point in time, you know, you're dealing with the Clean Water Act as well, the Cummins Pass, which uh, a lot of people, if you, got, if you had surface water, we'd be spending big money for, for our water bills because we would have to treat that water. Whereas we got well, we sort of kind of get by a little bit with it. But I would, I would say that what happens here is that if the business in the town of Littleton is wanting to do this, which gives the town an opportunity to build on a business community here of things that the town would like to see in here, I'd say go for it. The only problem that you have here is that you're saying the business is going to take care of the cost of the operation of this. And people as taxpayers, where that comes into play is that 
if uh, it doesn't, then it falls back on to the town. And if it falls back on the town, then that means that people that are paying taxes is going to have to pay for this operation because it's a plant that belongs to the town now if you vote it in. So you put it in, it ain't shut it down, you know, and don't use it. You got to keep running. So whatever it costs to do it at that time, if the business uh, doesn't uh, say uh, fulfill the obligation to do that, then it's going to fall back on taxpayer. That's on the backdraft that I find that you probably have a little better problem in there. But I think one of the things that they didn't do the last time, they didn't make it known to the, the average homeowner that, you know, this is something that we're going to have the business to do, and this is something that we're not saying your property tax is going to go up. You're right, George. We need to do a better job of explaining all that. And, uh, you know, anytime the town is the guarantor at the end of the day, there is risk. We do that all the time when we, uh, you know, we borrow money or we, we uh, invest in projects for roads or whatever it is. Um, but I, I would, the, only, the only detailed point I would uh, correct in, in your layout of that situation is it's not exclusively businesses, although where it's proposed, it would be a lot of business involved, but any, anybody, residential or business, who, you know, lived within the district, who tied in, they would be paying, you know, the, uh, the betterment off. Okay, yes. Uh, two things. One, George, to uh, respond to that, in the state of Massachusetts, there is no allowance for a private wastewater utility um, multiply owned. In other words, it's either the state uh, and authority or the city that owns those facilities. You're, we're not allowed unless new legislation is introduced. The business community couldn't elect on its own to go out and build a facility um, which isn't held by the town. Okay, there are some pretty good reasons for that, but the second thing I'd uh, suggest is that in our study, we've done a lot of work, we've introduced what we call, we call these things quirks, C-W-E-R-C-S's, uh, Community Water and Energy Resource Centers, and we've been de designing several of them. In our first go around here in Littleton in 2010 and 2011, we identified a number of sources of revenue that the treatment plant would create that would hold the cost of the treatment plant down. Uh, generating electricity, that is from the organics in the wastewater and from taking in food waste for uh, generation of electricity. The water itself, um, reclaimed water, selling it for industrial cooling water and process. But there's a third that we didn't, uh, weren't really uh, aware of at the time that's actually the most interesting source of revenue for a plant like this. And that's the heat in the water. Wastewater is hot, it turns out. You've all heard of um, uh, geothermal heating, where people drill a well down and take groundwater, because groundwater is, ambient temperature is 53 to 55 degrees, and you cycle it around through what's called a heat pump, and you can heat and cool your home with that uh, energy that you steal from the water, right? Well, wastewater comes into a plant at between 65 and 70 degrees which is substantially more energy potential. So this little plant, which would start out in Littleton uh, as we originally designed it at 100,000 gallons a day, and I believe the total cost of the plant was $4.3 million, um, would be able to, to heat and cool, for example, the entire IBM building there. Cool. And charge <laughs> for that um, opportunity, probably save IBM some money but also, I mean, I'm sure IBM's paying a pretty hefty bill to heat and cool that facility. It's a pretty big facility. Uh, and that comes in to the plant as a source of profit to pay back uh, for the, uh, the capital expense. The point is, is that we've, we've designed now three of these things, and in every one, they pay for themselves with utilities. Uh, so they drive down the betterment fee. The 100 properties in the district, uh, as laid out by MAPC, I believe, initially, would be able to pay this off. It would be affordable to them versus other forms of uh, treating waste. And we would have 
a source of energy uh, uh, here in town in case of bad things happening, catastrophic events and stuff like that. So there are a lot of reasons to look at this environmentally and otherwise. That's a good follow-up. Absolutely. 209 pages is a lot and digest all of it, but are we looking at like 10 to 11 acres? No. All right, I was reading the wrong page. You're looking at an acre to an acre and a half. Okay. Is that for the plant or is that I for just didn't know what the decimal That's for the plant. <laughs> uh, and then what you have, uh, I don't want to get too complex. No, here. no, no, I just, yeah. I'm just, yeah. Like, I'm just, yeah. just, I'm just trying to think it's an acre to an acre and a half, 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 and then there's a discharge. Sure. All, all of that stuff is, is exciting, and I'm glad we got a 290 page document, but we, we need to focus on the one page document yes, that gets people do. to understand the problem right, uh, right now. And uh, otherwise, people can walk around saying, we're going to be squirting sewer water into IBM. What's this all about? You know, <laughs> to keep them warm. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's a fantastic so, update. Right, thank, thank you all very much. Any last discussion points on this one? Look forward to your update. Yeah. yeah well, we'll be. Now that Bob's re-energized, Chuck and I will be. Uh, <laughs> MAPC. Thanks for the call. Thanks, Bob. Thank sure. you. Yeah. Right. Make uh, motion James, you're, you're uh, ready to spread the word as necessary too. Yes. Good. That's an integral part. Yes. The business. Bring people out. Yeah. And, and use the internet as you do so effectively. Yeah. I could do that too. Okay. Good. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much.